In this video, we're going to look at our cell model. We're going to look at the cell membrane and to finish up, we're going to look at the different stages of mitosis. So our cell model here, on the outside, we have the cell membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer. In the middle of the cell, we have the nucleus. And surrounding the nucleus, we have the nuclear membrane, which is a double phospholipid bilayer. In the middle of the nucleus, we have the nucleolus, which is responsible for making ribosomes. Everything between the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane is the cytoplasm. The liquid portion of the cytoplasm is called the cytosol. And then within the cytosol, we have various organelles. And we're going to look at the organelles uh, in this model that we can tell definitely what they are. So surrounding the nucleus and continual, continual with the nuclear membrane, we have the endoplasmic reticulum. And these white dots represent ribosomes. So where the ribosomes are on the endoplasmic reticulum, this is the rough ER. Where we can just see the endoplasmic reticulum, this is the smooth ER. We can also see some dots within the cytosol, and these are free ribosomes. This organelle here is a centriole and is involved in cell division. This organelle is the Golgi apparatus, and this is responsible for modifying and packaging proteins that are made on the rough ER and it sends them either to lysosomes, to the cell membrane, or for exotysosis, exocytosis out of the cell. These orange organelles are mitochondria, and they are responsible for producing ATP. And then we also have some other organelles, which are lysosomes and peroxisomes, but it's kind of hard to tell which ones are which, so we just want to stick with the main organelles. So now, let's take a closer look at the cell membrane. These are our two models of the cell membrane. In this model, we can see what the cell membrane is composed of. So it's easy to think that we have two lipids, two proteins, and two carbohydrates. So the two lipids we have are the phospholipids, shown here, and cholesterol, shown here. So the phospholipids have a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end. The hydrophobic are the lipid tails that point towards the middle of the membrane. And the hydrophilic is the glycerol phosphate part here, which points to the inside or the outside of the membrane. The cholesterol is used to strengthen the membrane at physiological temperatures. If we turn this around, we can see our two proteins here we have an integral protein or a transmembrane protein because it goes across the whole membrane. And here we can see a pro peripheral protein because it is just on the edge of the membrane. Then our two carbohydrates are glycolipids and glycoproteins. And these are always on the outside of the cell and are involved in cell signaling. This model here represents the fluid mosaic. So we can see that we have our phospholipid bilayer, one layer here and one layer here. The yellow, the, sorry, the white heads represent the hydrophilic part of the phospholipid and the red tails represent the hydrophobic 
part of the bilayer. So the hydrophobic tails point towards the inside of the membrane and the hydrophilic heads are on the outside. This blue here represents a transmembrane protein or an integral protein and this is in water so to represent that it is a fluid model so things float around. This part of the video is about mitosis. All somatic cells when they divide, go through mitosis. Most of the cell's life is spent in interphase, where it's going, doing the usual cell activities. But when it decides to divide, it goes through mitosis. The first stage is prophase, and in prophase, the chromatin condenses to form chromosomes, the nuclear envelope dissolves, and the nucleolus disappears. The next stage is metaphase where the chromosomes line up in the equatorial plane. Following metaphase, we have anaphase. And anaphase begins as soon as the chromosomes separate. And you can see the centrioles at each end of the cell, and the meiotic spindle draws the chromosomes towards each end. Telophase is the last phase, and telophase is the reverse of prophase. So during telophase, the chromosomes are going to become chromatin, the nuclear envelope is going to appear, and so is the nucleolus, and here we can see that cytokinesis, cell division, is occurring.